1974. Back in those days, I used to journey to London's West End at least once a week. My main port of call was the record shops, where I could spend hours going through all the albums, the old and the new, deciding what to buy and what not to buy. Most of the shops had a bargain rack. These were usually a home, an elephant's graveyard, for all the stinkers, the turkeys, the dross, the record company mistakes, but occasionally, very occasionally, a gem or two was to be found. Around the start of the summer of 1974, the album Buckingham Nicks started making an appearance in these racks, attractively priced at one pound or roughly two dollars. The cover, though now iconic, back then gave the impression of some dodgy pop duo, and in the 1970s, there were plenty of those. After about a month or two, and little or no takers, the album dropped to 50 pence, about a dollar. And I don't know why, I just kept getting drawn back to this album. And after a massive struggle, I parted with my 50 pence. Later that day when I got home, and I managed to put the album on the stereo, I found that the old intuition had not let me down, and I had bought a fantastic record. I played it endlessly through that long, hot, muggy summer of 1974 and still play it today, 46 years later. Back then, I heard nothing about them at all and I suppose that due to the lack of success of the album, Buckingham Nicks, the record company had dumped them. But the very next thing I ever heard about them was that they were now joining Fleetwood Mac and massive worldwide stardom and huge record sales were just around the corner. When I started my research for this review, I found that there is in fact a CD version of the album out there. It's available on Amazon and a link is in the description should you want to buy one. The album, the CD version, has the original 10 tracks with another 8 outtakes and demos and 3 live tracks. Buckingham Nicks, released September the 5th, 1973. Track 1, Crying in the Night by Stevie Nicks. Over some strident acoustic guitar chords, the world is introduced to the unique voice of Miss Stevie Nick. There's only one Stevie Nicks. At 31 seconds in, we have those beautiful multi-tracked harmonies by Stevie, with Lindsay joining in, and already we can see the duo's chemistry and their skill with melody and dynamics. It's a lovely slice of California rock pop. The track, written by Stevie, is about a good time girl, a hustler and a heartbreaker. The track goes from one lovely melody to another and is awash with those beautiful harmonies between Lindsay and Stevie. Now, bear with me as we take a leap to track 11, the single version of Crying in the Night. I'm guessing that this was a flop like the album, but this version starts with an electric guitar in tandem with the acoustic on the opening chords and throughout the song. This version boasts a different mix, with the bass and the drums and Lindsay's harmonies pushed up much higher in the mix, as well as some nice slide guitar. These changes give the song a much harder edge and make it much more radio friendly, and why oh why this wasn't a huge hit, I will never know. Track 2, Stephanie. Now, I wonder who this could be about. The track is a lovely finger-picked acoustic guitar piece from Lindsay. A friend who's a guitar teacher says over the years he's often been asked by his students to teach this. He believes that Lindsay recorded the acoustic guitar on two mics and when playing the two tracks back, let one track lag ever so slightly behind the other. This is how Lindsay creates that unique sound on this piece. He also thinks that Lindsay is a hugely, hugely underrated guitarist. Next up, without a leg to stand on. This opens with acoustic guitar, and with what sounds like to my ears, another acoustic guitar mic'd up and played through an amp. It's a world weary song, sung by Lindsay. I got nothing but time, no time for living. I've been everywhere, it's all the same. I just need somebody that I can lean on. Nobody wants to keep you when you're in love with the game. The magic here though, is when Stevie joins Lindsay on the chorus, and then sings with him right to the very end of the song. 
Those two voices joining together are something else. Without a leg to stand on sounds so much like what Cat Stevens was doing at this period in time, in the instrumentation and harmonically. Track 4, The Crystal. What can you say about this song? It's just a masterpiece and a song I will love to the end of my days. I turned around and the water was closing all around like a glove. Like the love that finally, finally found me. Then I knew in the crystalline knowledge of you it drove me through the mountains through the crystal-like and clear water fountain drove me like a magnet to the sea, to the sea, to the sea. Now, I know people love the Fleetwood Mac version, but for me, personally, this is the version that I love. With its drums, keyboards, guitar, soprano sax, and what sounds like, to my ears, a harp. And for me, Lindsay has never sounded better. And when Stevie joins him again on those choruses, it's just unbelievable. It's 3 minutes 50 seconds of sheer brilliance. Track 5, Long Distance Winner. And this is just pure Stevie Nicks. Stevie, when talking about this track, said it was all about the intensity of her relationship with Lindsay. Sunflowers in your face fascinate me. You love only the tallest trees. I come running down the hill, but you're fast. You're the winner. Long distance winner. Not unlike the blue white fire, you burn brightly in spite of yourself. I bring the water down to you, but you're too hot to touch. You're too hot to touch. The song is set to intertwining acoustic guitars and pedal steel, and Lindsay gets to play a couple of lovely electric guitar solos. Love somebody, save their soul. Tie them to your heaven, erase their hell. Love their lifestyle if you feel it. Don't try and change them. You never will. Next up, Don't Let Me Down Again, is a raucous boogie, coming over like a cross between ZZ Top and T-Rex, and I guarantee it will get your feet tapping. Lindsay here really shows what a great guitarist he is. Playing around, dancing around with the main riff, slightly changing its shape here and there, but still keeping the drive and energy of the track. Don't you let me down again. You're just bound to see the end. Baby, baby, don't treat me this way. I'm going to make it again someday. There's just one thing I'd like to know. I've got no more to lose if you go. Fleetwood Mac played this a few times live and had Lindsay and Stevie almost shouting the lyrics to each other. Track 12 here is a mono mix of the song, which was sent out as a promo for radio stations. Again, who was doing the promotion for this record? Don't Let Me Down Again should have been another massive hit. Track 7, Django. This is a piece written by John Lewis of the Modern Jazz Quartet and a tribute to the great guitarist Django Reinhardt. It's an exceptionally difficult piece to play, especially the way Lindsay plays it here. Who else would think of covering a piece like this on a rock pop record in the 1970s. Not too many. Next up, Races Are Run. This is the sort of song you write when all the arguing, the fighting, the bickering is over. It's sad, elegant and has a deep sense of resignation. Tell me I'm wrong. I can't believe you. We tried a thousand times before, rained on reasons, kept us believing that there might still be more. Stevie takes the first verse and then Lindsay joins in on the chorus and then they both sing together till the end of the song. The dynamic of having either Lindsay or Stevie take one verse, the first verse, and then having them join together creates a wonderful dynamic on this album. And as the album progresses, the chemistry between the two is just astounding. The song also features some lovely guitar melodies, some great interplay between acoustic, electric guitars and pedal steel. Next up, Lola My Love. Lindsay goes all Delta Blues on us. 
Lola is a down and dirty funky blues number, which to my ears sounds very close to Death Letter by the great Delta blues man, Sunhouse. If we skip forward to track 19, we get a live version of Lola. And this is even harder edged and shows Lindsay's superb blues guitar technique. So we come to what would have been the final track on the old vinyl album. The stunning Frozen Love. This is the track Mick Fleetwood heard at Keith Olsen's studio that convinced him to invite Lindsay and Steve to join Fleetwood Mac. And you can see why. Frozen Love starts off with some beautiful acoustic guitar and at 13 seconds it's joined briefly by an electric. Then at 28 seconds Lindsay sings You may not be as strong as me and I may not care to teach you. It may be hard to keep up with me but I'll always be able to reach you. At 50 seconds he's joined by Stevie and if you go forward I'll meet you there and if you climb up through the cold freezing air look down below you search out above and cry out to life for a frozen love. By now the electric guitar, drums and bass have joined in and the track begins to drive forward. Stevie takes the next verse. Life gave me you, the change was made, there's no beginning over. You are not happy but what is love? Hate gave you me for a lover. This is just magical songwriting and performing. I must have heard this hundreds and hundreds of times, but it gets me every single time. At 2 minutes 39 seconds, the acoustic guitars weave in and out of each other, and we are joined by flute and strings. At 3 minutes 56 seconds, Lindsay takes flight on electric guitar, and when he does, he pours out his heart and soul into that instrument. Few, very few players can put that amount of emotion into their playing. At 5 minutes 46 seconds, Lindsay and Stevie with some great call and response vocals. And if you go forward, I'll meet you there. And if you climb up through the cold freezing air, look down below you, search out above, and cry out to life for a frozen love. And so, a magnificent climax to a magnificent album. And there you have it, the original Buckingham Nicks record. So, let's have a look at the outtakes. Track 11, Crying in the Night, the single version, we looked at that earlier, as we did with track 12, Don't Let Me Down Again, the single version. So on to track 13, Sorcerer. Stevie used a new version of this song on her album, Trouble in Shangri-La. It was also considered for Fleetwood Mac's Tusk album, but discarded at the last moment. Buckingham Nicks recorded this rough demo as well as playing it live in concert. Sorcerer is just pure, brilliant Stevie Nicks. And even in this rough demo version, it's brilliant. It's another classic in the making. Stevie would often say that she'd come up with these half-formed ideas for songs and then she'd hand it to Lindsay and Lindsay would mould and shape it into something they could use. Next up, Garbo, also known as You Could Forget. It's another track used by Stevie later in her solo career on her album Wild Heart. It's a lovely, slow, elegant ballad about the trappings of stardom. Jimmy Avine, who produced Stevie's album Belladonna, said she had such a unique sense of melody. It was like no one else's and her songs followed a path and were structured like no one else's. So, to track 15, Cat House Blues. It's a short, sassy, ragtime blues from Stevie. A very unusual style for her. It would sound perfect coming from a 1950s cabaret singer. It was one of the first songs that Stevie ever wrote back in the late 60s. If this had ever been performed live, it would have been a showstopper. I can see Stevie performing this with a wink and a smile and a tip of that black top hat. Track 16, That's Alright. This is absolutely magnificent and Stevie performs it in a almost country style. She sounds tired, resigned and utterly world weary. Though I like the Fleetwood Mac version, this demo absolutely nails it. Here, without the extra instrumentation, just guitar 
and what sounds like a banjo, uncluttered. It has almost a gospel feel and it's magnificent. And I don't know why a country singer, one of the big country western stars from the States, hasn't covered this because it is brilliant. Meet me down by the railway station. I've been waiting and I'm through waiting for you. The train sings the same kind of blues. Well, I don't know. I always trusted. Sometimes I think that I must have been. I must have been crazy. Crazy to wait on you. Next up, Candlebright, or as it's also known as, Nomad. You know, these demos are like having a Lindsay and Stevie unplugged gig. They are just stunning. It's just another beautiful love song. But notice again how these two voices are just made for each other. So on to track 18, Without You. Now this is one song that does sound better, recorded by Fleetwood Mac. But that version sounds and feels so much like it could have been included on the Buckingham Knicks album back in the day. And it's so good to hear them sing a love song without all the angst and pain. So that just leaves us with the three live tracks. Lola we covered earlier, and then we have Races A Run. And while the recording here sounds quite raw, the magic and the chemistry is still there. And lastly, we have a live version by Buckingham Nicks of Rhiannon, Will You Ever Win? I saw Fleetwood Mac perform this live back in 1976, and it was just sublime. Stevie just took control of the song and sang like a woman possessed and the rest of the band matched her step by step. Would Rhiannon have worked with just Lindsay and Stevie, or did they need the experience and chops of Mick, John and Christine? All the basics are here, it just needs to be moulded into the classic it became. So, there you have it, Buckingham Nicks. Now, in a perfect world, I'd love Stevie and Lindsay to put all their differences to one side, life's too short and none of us are getting any younger. Record again, do Buckingham next two, and if not a tour, then do one huge live televised concert. Sing all those old songs. I think it would be very cathartic, very healing, and people would go absolutely nuts for it. You know, over the years, I've lost count of how many people have told me they love that first album, Buckingham Knicks. You know, get it together. Like I say, time's running out and the world would go nuts for it. It would be a massive event. I really hope they get together and they can put all those differences aside and we can have one final hurrah. So thanks for listening and watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you like what we're doing, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay safe and um, take care. See you in the next video.